Good evening. Welcome to Martinez Life. I'm Tom Gertie. Frida Keat is with us, a real character, wonderful woman, great lady, and I want to welcome you to Martinez Life. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm really yeah. fine. Where were you born, Frida? I was born in Visalia, California. And how did you end up in the Martinez area? Well, my mother became a, a single mother when we were very young, and we lived in Hollister for a while, and then she was able to uh, get a job at a, a ranch, Joe Shearer's Ranch in, in Concord, when Willow Pass Road was nothing but a dirt road and yeah. no homes, all uh, uh, yeah. agriculture land. And she was a domestic and kept the house and raised us children there. And then she moved to Pacheco, and she got a job in Martinez with Mrs. Cartwright. Mrs. Cartwright's name was uh, Nimi, and she was oh. quite popular in the Martinez social life with uh, 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 opera people and uh, musicians, and, and uh, she had lots of uh, boarders. Oh. And my mother was a domestic there, and we lived, uh, after we moved from Pacheco, we lived around the corner at 1515 Pine Street. That building is still there. And uh, uh, I, when I went to junior high, I worked there too. I went to at I the boarding house. At the boarding house, I went and made the lunches before I went to junior high to work. There was about eight lunches I made every morning for the the shell workers. I knew what went in their coffee and who didn't take it and everything else. But it surprises me now that I think about it. How for a junior high student, and that was my job. I did that little job, and she was very very nice to us and to my mother and uh, we uh, oh, she was going to take me to the opera but she, she had to take my sister first she was older than I was and she took my sister and when it was my day to come she got sick and I never got to the opera <laughs> so the, the the boarding house what was the name of the boarding house again Mrs. Scott Cartwright's boarding house. Mrs. Cartwright. So there were a number of boarders that lived there yes, and what have you. That's right. Uh -huh. And uh, she carried that was part of her business. That she, was her business. Uh -huh. So you got room and you got board. But we didn't stay there. No. They did. Yeah. Yeah. You the, stayed in Pacheco. Well, after before, you left the Shear property. Yeah, for a while, and she worked at Cartwright's boarding house, and we still lived in Pacheco. And my mother used to walk home many times from Martinez to Pacheco uh -huh. after she worked the day. Whereabouts in Pacheco did you live? Uh, just the first street off of off of the main street called yeah. Blackwood Drive. Oh, okay. And we lived there on. And the Bogers, you ever you get mixed up with the Bogers, didn't very you? Very much, very much. They're like my cousins. Well, actually, since my my mother finally married their uncle, they are my cousins. <laughs> well, the Bogers are well known people from Pacheco in those very, days. Yes, very popular group and very uh, uh, nice people. German descent, and my mother was from Switzerland, and she. What part of Switzerland was your mother from? Near Lucerne. Oh. The, on the German border, very near to Lucerne. And uh, uh, Mrs. Boger and my mother spoke the German language together, so they were like sisters because neither one had a relative here uh, excepting their family. And she had a brother that was uh, everybody called Uncle Hans. And when my mother married him, my husband used to get a kick out of saying, Oh, your you're mother married him? Uncle Hans. After. After she became a widow, at first she they couldn't get married on account of the Catholic faith. <laughs> you know that was very. His sister was uh, against it because of the Catholic faith, and my grandmother from Switzerland, God bless her soul, I never met her. She wrote to my mother and said, "You can't marry this man because you're a divorcee." And account. So that's when she, that's when we moved to Martina. She was going to get all the way away from him. All the way from Martinez to Pacheco. Or so something. that's how you moved to Martinez. That's how I moved. Well, let's say so. Before we get carried away, what is this? Well, this is my key, and I never lose them because I wear them all the okay, time. Okay, so, yeah. But I want to zoom forward. We're in the, the Kirk's Drive-In. Yes, that's after I grew up and got I married. I know, okay. and I'm going to go a little forward because. Uh -huh. That, even I remember that, and I actually remember sitting in a car with my older sister Maureen, uh -huh. my older sister Joan, and ordering a hamburger and french fries, and you coming to the window. I probably did. I probably did. I really did. do, do remember you that. Really? Yes. Yeah, well, I had lots of, of uh, young people there that were my regular people. John and Joy Roush, uh, Norma and Everett De La Rosa, uh, Will and Fran Hall, and uh, uh, Maureen and Tom McCure and Barbara Thiessen and 
oh, God, I'm sure I could remember more if I, if I had time to sit down and write them down. You mean couples that came as, as sweethearts? As sweethearts. And they're married now, and I just feel like they're my kids yet, you know. So you were a car hop. I was a car hop. At Kirk's Drive-In. At Kirk's Drive-In. Tell everybody that doesn't know where Kirk's Drive-In was. Well, it was on, uh, on the corner of 4 and 24. That was the crossroad. And Spriggs' uh, uh, eating place was right there uh, up from the 4 and 24 corner. Yeah. And they had a shell station, and Kirk's Drive-In was right there. And uh, it's my understanding that he rented that from uh, Dr. Edme's for like 99 cents or $99 for ever, you know. And then when the, the, the highway went through, of course, that dissolved all the contracts because that, that uh, Highway 4, you know, took to So precedent. this is before Highway 680. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. This is when 24 that and comes through the Caldecott Tunnel that's right. passes through Pacheco. Well, Walnut Creek. Yeah, Walnut and Creek. And when it hit Highway 4, there was four corners, that's and right. Kirk's was on one of the corners. And, and I don't think there was anything on any other corner that, that time. That was lots of land out there at that what time. What years are we talking about? Well, let me see now. Uh, Sharon was three years old, and she was born in, in 44, 46. She was born in 46. So that was 49, 1949, yeah. when that, that was built there. And you were out there working. And I was there working. And, and the I, kids used to come from Pittsburgh everywhere. and from Mount Diablo everywhere, High School. Everywhere, everywhere, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. That was yeah. quite a place. It was very good. It was fun place. And who worked in the cook? Who was the cook? Well, you know what? You never guess. Mrs. Torville. Do you remember Mrs. Torville, the coach's, the, uh, the coach's uh, mother? She was one of the cooks there. Are you sure it was Turville or Turner? Turville. Beth Turville. I know Beth. That was Charlie Turville's mother. Mother, right. And she was one of the cooks there, right? Yeah. And Lil Rose, she was one of the waitresses. You know Lillian Rose? I don't remember, yeah. Yeah, well, she was one of, and then we had, uh, I don't know who all, I can't, can't even remember, uh, um, Dorothy Bar Do Dottie Bartholomew. Well, I don't think Dottie ever worked there because she worked at Hubbard Cupboard. Dottie Bartholomew <laughs> and her twin sister Peggy, uh, I can't even think of Peggy's last name anymore. Uh, their, their maiden name was Mahoney. And those two girls worked at uh, Hubbard's Cupboard. And that was their uncle that owned that. And they taught me to be a car hop before I ever went out to, to Kirk's Drive-In to be a car hop. And you did a good job out there. I had fun doing it. And it was a Norville's mother didn't work there, though. Yeah. Norville Turner? Yeah. Well, he was poor Charlie's brother, wasn't he? No, they oh, were no. not brothers. They oh, were just no, that's friends. Right. That's right. Yeah, now I got you It now. was just uh, Turville's mother. Yeah, but uh, she had three or four boys. Yes, mm -hmm. Mrs. Turville mm -hmm. did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what year did you go to, what year did you finish Alhambra? In in 43. In 43. Yeah, Phil, Phil Cellini and uh, Bill Francis and uh, uh, Maria Amato and... Uh, who else do I want to name? Uh, Betty Bartholomew. No, Betty, not yeah. Betty Bartholomew. Betty uh, Wheeler Pereira. Al Lamelli. Al Lamelli. Al Lamelli and I are, were in a, a class picture, and we were in the in the antique store <laughs> when his first wife passed away, and the the kids were home, and we were in the same restaurant. So I went over. And and spoke to him for a minute, and I said to his children, the little one, the one of the girls is a nun, and I said, you know what? If you want to walk down the street, you can see how old your father and I are because we're in the antique store. I'm sitting in the little chair, and Al Lamelli standing right behind yeah. me in this store. But the picture's gone, and so is the antique Tax store. Tax collector and treasurer of the county for That's many right, years. That's right, for many years. And That's honest right. as the day is long. That's right, absolutely. And this '43, you graduated, is right in the middle of. World War II. Mm -hmm. What was that like? Well, you know, at that time, I didn't think about it, excepting that uh, when the, the fellows went on the, uh, the 7th of December, that, you know, yeah. horrendous thing that happened, well, I kept thinking, now I won't get to dance anymore. That was my thing. I would, I would miss the dancing, you know. 
And so I can remember vividly praying one day when the Payless store was there and you got off of, of Highway 24 and you went into the Payless store there. I, I can recall praying sincerely, oh God, am I ever going to get to dance again? And now look at how my prayer is finally answered. I'm dancing about four or five times a week, every week. Really? Yes. Where do you dance? I dance at the, at the Senior Center in Concord from 1 to 4 on Tuesday. And on Thursday, I dance at the Senior Center in Pleasant Hill from 1 to 4. I have two dance clubs I belong to, the Merry Mixers. I dance on the first Friday and the third Friday. And that's live music. And they even have an open bar if anybody's interested. And then I dance with the Diablo Singles on the last Wednesday of the month. And when uh, Rossmore has their dance on the fourth Sunday, I dance with the Rossmore group and any other uh, dances I can pick up in between. I are there are there more men than women at these dances? Oh, I wish, I wish. Yeah. No, there's a, there's a very shortage of men. They say that we uh, outnumber the men seven to one, so I don't Seven know. to one? That's what I heard, yeah, that's the, the ratio is. What's your best dance? I love to do the cha-cha. The, uh, the, the cha the cha-cha is a great dance. I love the cha-cha. You can get in and swing and wiggle around all you want. <laughs> It's really fun. I can do I can do most anything. I'll tell you something I haven't What's told you. What's that? When I was 80 years old, I won a jitterbug con contest. You're joking. I'm, ki I'm not kidding you. Uh, we, it was the 50th anniversary party from the senior centers in Pleasant Hill, and it was uh, the 16th of September, yeah. because on the 19th, I left for my one-month uh, one motor tour that I drove my sister all over Arizona and California. Anyhow, uh, we were in that contest. There was about six couples, and, and we won it, and we won $100. Wow. And I have to say my dance partner was Manny Gallart. He's still dancing, and we're, uh, we love to dance together, but he, he's a very nice gentleman, and he keeps all the ladies on the floor. I admire him for that. He yes. don't stay with one girl. He yeah. just takes so all So this the is not about romance. This is about just music and enjoying and it. And exercise. And, and you dance 60s music, 70s? What do you dance? All of that. All of that. Mm. All of that good music. All of the good music. You still live up in Mountain View, right? Right. I moved there in 1955, and I'm in the same house. 1955. Uh -huh. Wow. Uh -huh. Same house. How did you happen to move there? Well, that's where my husband picked. He, he's, okay. he's the one that picked it more than I did. I had another place in mind that I wanted, but he... He, he didn't go for it, so we got there. And, uh, and He's passed on. Yeah, he died in 1984. Okay. So I'm, I'm, then I married again. I had another nice husband that we met dancing. Can You, you had the, two husbands. That's right. Both good guys? Both good guys. Uh -huh. uh, uh, we all have our faults, and some were better than others. But anyhow, yeah. uh, uh, this, ge this gentleman... But you had two happy marriages. Yes, that's right. And, and I loved him to death. They're both dead, so I must have loved him to death. <laughs> Could the one that passed away in 84... Yeah, that's Sharon's father. Sharon's father? Yeah. Was he a good dancer? Well, we didn't get to dance like we do now because we were both working. We had to make house payments and raise uh, our child and, uh, yeah. and everything. Uh, but all the PG&E functions we went to and we danced and all the school functions we went to and we danced and any uh, parties or weddings and stuff, we danced. And he, but uh, now, you know, it's more fun. We can do that. Yeah, but you're, you're no longer married because your second husband passed that's away. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, right. was he a dancer? Yeah, that's where I met him. Dances. It was funny because uh, we, we'd been going to the same dance twice a week, I'm sure, and we were in the same hall twice a week. And I never paid any attention to that man, and he, I guess he didn't pay any attention to me either. And we got into a whistle dance, you know, that's when you dance with somebody and they blow the whistle and you dance with the next guy that's around there uh, dancing. So anyhow, um, uh, uh, he had this beautiful crucifix on, and uh, I said, gee, I like your cross. And uh, the whistle blew, and I spun off to the next one. He said, why? And I said, I guess because I'm Catholic. I didn't know why, but it was a I lovely see, crucifix. Yeah. And so he paid a little attention to me, and I paid a little attention to him, and he started coming to play cards with my mother. I, the last two years of my mother's life, she died at 91. What kind of a card game? 
uh, what did we play? Pinochle, of course. Pinochle. I'm sorry. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, Pinochle is a, Gotta a stay great quick. game. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Uh, anyhow, and then he used to stay for dinner, oh. and uh, but he had to go home at ten o'clock. And he said one night, he said, "You know, I could pass park my car down around the corner. Nobody would know I was here." I said, "The hell you can." I said, "You got to go home at ten o'clock." <laughs> so then, anyhow, my mother passed away. And what are you getting there? Well, I think I should have a Kleenex. Oh, okay. So. Well, we're going quick, but it's still going. Yeah. Now, where did you work, Frida? Well, I worked in the school cafeterias, Martinez School Cafeterias, for 28 years. Which schools primarily? I worked in every one except the new one out at Morello. I never got out to that one. But that's my claim to fame. Everywhere I go, I'm their old lunch lady. <laughs> <laughs> what I was your it. favorite school as a lunch lady? Well, I, I say Vista up on Vista Way is when we didn't have a, um, a, a food director. I was able to do the whole thing. I made the menus, uh, uh, sold the tickets. So you had independence. I, I, yeah, I had to, to uh, buy the grocery, make sure the grocery was there, make sure all the paper goods was there. So that's the Mountain View School. Yes, uh huh. And then, I, and then when the new John Sweat came, well, I was there. But we had a central kitchen, and we finally got another uh, food director that was able to. So the menu came from on high. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And, and the food did too at the central. And they still have a central kitchen now. But 28 years ago, well, I've been retired now since 1986, so it was longer than 28 years ago. But we used to peel the potatoes and pick the eyes out and and uh, cook everything from scratch. Now. They have frozen and dehydrated and everything, which is the quick method, and I guess they save a lot of time by that. But sure. I can remember peeling potatoes. Did and you work at Alhambra? Yes, I worked. And Ralph Jackson was my boss at the at the uh, ball games. I sold tickets. Carmen Perry and I, I remember you. we sold tickets all the time for the ball games. That was fun too. Yeah, but when you worked at Alhambra, what years do you remember that you worked there? Do you think? Oh God, it was some. I don't know. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> I can't remember the years. All right, that doesn't yeah. matter. No, it know, doesn't yeah. matter. Because I remember the lunch crew very vividly yeah. when well, I was yeah. there. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, they were characters. Oh, uh -huh. well, we... Uh, we I was, uh, I was uh, a year behind your daughter, Sharon. Yeah. We made a happy a happy game out of it. And, uh, she was 63. Yeah. You were 43. Right. And my, and my grandson, uh, what? 83. 83, yeah. Uh -huh. 83. Uh -huh. Perry. No, my grandson is uh, 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 what's it? Uh, Cordova. Cordova, uh, that's right, uh -huh, Jeff. Yeah, right. Cordova. Yeah, eighty-three. Yeah. So, so you still ex you lost Stanley Valentine? Yeah, Stanley was a great guy. You know, he he drove the car until he was ninety-five years old, or or ninety years old, I should say. And Darla called. He was in an accident two in one week. So yeah. she says, we took the car away from my dad, but you go every every uh, Tuesday and Thursday. Couldn't you pick my dad up? And we live kitty corner on the same block, so it wasn't no imposition or anything. And except, he was a good dancer. Well, he used to be, but he got a little slow on his feet in the end, you know. But, yeah. but he made a lot of little old ladies happy in one afternoon just by asking them to get up and dance, you know. Yeah. And everybody loved Stanley. He was a, a great guy. A fun guy. I always, when I go through a yellow light, I shouldn't say this on the cops will be looking for me. If I sneak through a yellow light with Stanley in the car, he says, "Oh, you're Italian." He always told me this story. This Italian immigrant came over, and he, he couldn't read or write really to speak of, so he wanted to get his driver's license, and he went to the uh, DMV, and so the guy said, "Well, we're going to give you a, an oral test." So he said. Uh, to him, what does the red light mean? And he said, oh, that'll mean you got to stop. And he says, and what does the green light mean? And that'll mean you could go ahead. And what does the yellow light mean? And that'll mean you go like a hell because the next one's going to be red. <laughs> so I always think of Stanley when I go through a yellow light. Yeah, you really do. <laughs> he's, he's a character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice man, gentleman's gentleman, and really. W when, uh, where did your mother live in her last years? Well, uh, the last two years she lived with me at my home because she went into heart failure and she couldn't live at the retirement home. And she lived at that retirement home on Boyd Road where the monument is, you know, the oh, yeah, se yeah. second driveway in there that was uh, Pleasant Hill uh, Retirement Home. And she lived there for about six or seven years, I believe. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, then she left there in heart failure and, the, and then she 
you know, you make your own bed and you have to be dressed for lunch yeah. and dinner. You can go in your bathroom to, to breakfast. And then I always did her laundry and, and uh, did her hair once a week. And, and then when she got sick, and then I took her in my house. And But my sister came on Tuesdays and Thursdays so I could dance with the seniors. <laughs> so you got relief. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. You have a great attitude about life. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what your mottos are about life and the, the joy that you seem to put oh, into everything. Well, you just got to love everybody. That's all there is to it. Yeah. And have faith and, and, and know that, that Jesus loves you mm -hmm. and I love you too. <laughs> so you love people. Is I love you? people. You love people. I do. Right, good mm -hmm. for you. Do you still see friends that you grew up with from Martinez? Oh, yes. Uh, every time. If I meet them in the Safeway store, I give them a hug. Really? You know, yeah, uh, because uh, <laughs> what else is it to, to, to do, you know? When you're um, 83 years old, you get all the hugs you can get. <laughs> you're 83. I'm 83 years old, yeah. Well, you seem fired up for 83, ready to go. Well, I make the fun I have myself. And I have a beautiful family. We have family night every Tuesday at my granddaughter's in, uh, uh, off of, uh, off of uh, Alhambra Avenue. When you go to Pinot, she lives right there on... Uh, a uh, quail lane. She has her dream home there, and oh, we have okay. family night there. Except if it's very hot, then we'll have it at Sharon's on Wanda Way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because she has the pool. <laughs> oh, okay. But so, but anyway, I mean, you, this attitude that you've had. Were you like this in high school? I think so. But I was a working girl too. My mother had three kids she was raising, and so I, uh, I had to leave there. And I worked for Felix Dry Cleaners. Do you remember? Oh, I Suzini? remember Felix. Yes, Suzini, Su yeah. Suzini and and uh, what was his wife's name? I forgot it now, uh, offhand. But anyhow, I worked for them after school. I went up and picked up the house a little bit and made the beds and did the supper. Made the supper, which she had prepared just to cook. You know. Yeah. So. And where else did you work? You have other jobs? You worked at Kurtz, you worked uh -huh. at the uh, Suzini's, yeah. uh, Felix well, Dry Cleaners? I, I worked in Western Five and Dime, oh. and then I worked at uh, the Arsenal during the war. What did you do at the Arsenal? I worked in the link loading plant, the 50 calibers and the 30 caliber bullets that went into the links, you know. Over in Benicia. The, over in Benicia. That was great. Rode the ferry boat over and rode the ferry boat back. What a, what a life, huh? <laughs> And then after the war, then you went into the. Uh... Uh, well, but then uh, um, when when my when I met my husband during this time, we were giving one of the floor ladies a um, birthday party, and we went to the El Nido in Vallejo. That was a, quite a nightclub there, yeah. and there was eighteen women. We all went out to celebrate this lady's, and that's three fellows walked in in their work clothes for a drink before they were going to the the um, the. 12 to 8 shift or whatever, and of course, we women all latched on to them. Well, that one fellow and that another fellow never got to the work that night. They wanted to take us home, and, and there was one girl that was living at my mother's. Her husband was in the service, and so she was in this group, too. So we let them take, take us home. He's, I said, I wouldn't let you take me home alone, but if you could take my girlfriend, well, I'll, I'll ride with you. So I... That's how we met. Then, then I guess my mother fell in love with him because he came every day, every Sunday, to have a hot meal that my mother cooked for him. Uh, Did uh, she cook German style? Yeah, and very good. He always told me that my mother cooked better than his mother. So now I don't know what his mother cooked like. Yeah. She was a good cook. Do you still have rel relatives back in the old country? Oh, I got 21 first cousins, and I've been over there about four or five times, and I live in when I go. 21 first cousins, and they're great. And, uh, Whereabouts are these people located? In Lucerne and all around oh, Switzerland. Switzerland, yeah. So that's a German part of Switzerland. Yeah, that's right. Uh huh. Yeah. It's fantastic. We have, we've I've had great times over there. I really have. And um, what have, was the family name? Uh, uh, they say Kuchler. It's K U C H L E R. But in the American, my godmother, they always spelled it Kichler. K E E C H L E R. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that's a beautiful area, Lucerne. Oh, it's world lovely. World famous. Well, it's lovely, and you know where the Pilatus Mountain is right there? Uh, in, um, it's uh, called Alpnerstadt. It's a little town out from Lucerne. And my uh, first cousin has a garage there, a Toyota garage, and he's one of the best uh, taxpayers in, in Switzerland. My uncle, uh, when 77, when we went, told my mother he was one of the 10 top taxpayers in all of Switzerland. 
In other uh, words, he's got the... Yeah, he's got enough. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, uh, and they're only, they're only a half a block from the Pilatus Mountain to go up the tram. Oh, okay. On the Pilatus Mountain. They're only a half a, a block there, and their name is Dolomo. And they have Dolomo um, Do you Toyota. still remember some of the language? Well, I can understand it better than I can speak it. But when you go back there, you do it a little bit. Oh, yeah, you? yeah. I have my, my phrase that I learned at one, before I went to one of the family parties because I wanted to be able to commute yeah. a little bit. And I, and I tell them that it's been glue, click, and tile from the Shane Agrosa Family Susine. That means I'm so happy to be a part of this large family. Something like that, anyhow. <laughs> Good for you, yeah. So, and I remember that. Well, I think they're happy to have you. Well, you know what they said, Switzerland will never be the same after you left. <laughs> they told me that. <laughs> they said it'd never be the same. They said Switzerland will never be the same after you're gone. <laughs> yeah. But we you have... still enjoy Martinez, don't oh, you? Oh, I love Martinez. It's my best place. Yeah. 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 Everybody loves everybody, and we're kind to everybody in Martinez. That's true, isn't it? It is yeah. true. Yeah. Everybody says so. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. that's good, and it, uh, you still know a lot of people, and you've been in the same place for a long yes, time. Yes, that's right, right. And a lot of old friends still around town Lots and what have of, you. That's you right. Know? Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of your class members from high school are still yeah, around. Yeah, Phil Cellini, and he, he's still around. He used to have that picnic every year, which he got a little bit too much and out of hand, and he doesn't have it anymore, and I feel bad because I went to every one that he had except the one, and that one I was 